Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of the Zoology Podcast. In this episode, I kind of want to play off our previous episode on Universe 25, the disturbing Mouse Utopia. In that, I want to compare the trajectory of modern Western society in relation to Universe 25. So, if you haven't listened to the previous episode, Universe 25, The Disturbing Mouse Utopia, please give it a listen before listening to this episode. Okay, now, strap in, because we're going to go through some really fascinating facts from a more biological, evolutionary-focused lens. Humans like the mice of Universe 25 do not use their space equitably. Instead, just as the mice had done, humans also choose to congregate together in villages, towns and cities. In my country, England, nearly 83% of the human population live in what is classified as an urban area, that's these towns and villages, while only 17% live in the countryside. Living in a built-up urban environment obviously has many benefits. You're closer to services, to entertainment, there's a lot of opportunities, there's a lot of change that can be taken advantage of to better one's life and live meaningfully. Yet, one of the key benefits in living in a city is that there's just more people, and with more people means that there's more opportunities to find a mate, to find a partner. And this sounds great, but it can have its downside. Now, in Universe 25, only a few male mice actually had sexual access to the females, while most just got left behind. Now, why would that be? Well, if we compare this to modern online dating trends, we know that from data analysed by OkCupid, that 78% of women who use online dating are only interested in the top 20% of men. This leaves 80% of men competing for the bottom 22% of women. Now this is kind of crazy if you can wrap your head around it, but I don't think this is really going to be a shock to anyone. If you've ever used online dating, it's very obvious to see the difference between the amount of messages a woman receives versus the amount of messages a man will receive, whether the male is more likely to send a text versus to receive one, or whether the woman is more likely to send a text versus receive one. We all know just from our anecdotal experience, that women are far more likely to receive many, many, many messages from men. So it's no wonder that they get to be so choosy, while men, on the other hand, play more of the pursuing role, and therefore they're not actually going to be pursued as much by women. Not to say that it doesn't happen, because it does, but it's just a rarer sexual strategy for females. And this is easy to see, and it's easy to understand from an evolutionary reason why this would be. For men to copulate, not much effort is required. A bit of physical exertion, and that's pretty much it. You know, once you've done your business, you can just leave. But for a woman, it's a bit more risky, because until the advent of birth control, women really didn't have a choice of whether they would get pregnant or not. It's just going to happen, so they have to be very, very choosy with the men they sleep with. And this choosiness, well, this choosiness is ingrained within the species. Females have had to do this that if their strategy was to just sleep with any man that would have them, well, they're going to end up finding themselves needing a lot of resources to care for a lot of children, and men are going to find that they can just procreate a lot and not give any resources. There's a lot of benefit to being a male in that situation, so it's no wonder that females are so choosy. It makes perfect evolutionary sense, and not only does it make perfect sense, it's a smart thing to do. Let the males compete between themselves, then you get to pick the best ones. It's bloody brilliant. Now, the female mice in Universe 25 did not have to worry about resource procurement, while modern humans still must work for their income. And so while income or the ability to procure resources for many people is a key factor when choosing a mate, this is not actually a factor for the mice in Universe 25. So what happens when we take away such a key external pressure? Well, you tend to amplify the biological. And what I mean by this is that you allow the females to choose the most physically and socially attractive males to mate with. And this obviously results in fewer and fewer males getting mating access. And most being ignored entirely. But don't worry, we're going to talk more about this in just a minute. So moving on, in Universe 25 we had the beautiful ones. The mice who spent most of their time preening and avoiding mating. Well, in the West, we see a massive emphasis placed on personal beauty. This isn't a unique thing to the West. It's a universal human trait. 
Beauty signifies youth and fertility, therefore it's no wonder that people try to amplify this. Yet, in the youth of today, we are seeing fewer and fewer sexual encounters when compared to previous generations. For example, a 2016 study showed that among American adults aged 20 to 24, 15% of millennials born in the 1990s had no sexual partners since the age of 18. When you compare this to Gen Xers born in the 1960s, it stood at around 6%. Alongside this, a 2020 study showed that for American adults from 18 to 24 years of age, significantly more men were reported as having no sexual partner when compared to women, while 14% of men were reported as having three or more sexual partners compared to the women's 7%. Women are reported of having significantly more sex than their male counterparts, while 74% of women currently have one sexual partner. This number was only 57% reported in males. Yep, you heard that right. More American women are having sex than their male counterparts. But what does this mean? Well, clearly, unless these women are choosing to have homosexual relationships then it must be that only a few men are servicing multiple women, while the other men are being left out to dry. Just like what we saw with the mice of Universe 25. Now this isn't really a shock, because both mice and humans function on the same evolutionary function, to breed with the most physically and socially attractive partner. And so therefore, it's not a surprise that women are choosy and only engage in sexual acts with what they consider a high-valued male. Well, we also see this in online dating again. Data taken from OkCupid showed that when women and men were asked to rate how attractive the opposite sex is on a 0 to 5 scale, 0 being the least attractive and 5 being the most attractive, the results might be surprising to some. Men rated in a standard bell curve, which means that most women were rated between 2 and 3 on the scale while significantly fewer women were rated as being extremely unattractive, that's a 0 to 1, or very attractive, a 4 to 5. Now women, well women didn't rate men as kindly. Instead of a nice, fair bell curve, women rated men in an L curve. Or putting it simply, they rated 80% of men as being unattractive. While some were rated as attractive looking, only a very small percentage were actually rated as being attractive. And come on, ladies, that's just not fair. (laughs) And this is a really scary statistic. Men, pray to God you don't find yourself in a resource-abundant utopia. Because unless you're lucky enough to be in the few percentage of men who women find attractive, well, you might find yourself checking out of society like the mice who occupied the centre of Universe 25. Well, that's unless you can migrate to a new place, one with hardship where virtues beyond physical attractiveness and sociality are valued. We found from Universe 25 that males who were not able to acquire a mate or emigrate to another place in search of opportunities become socially withdrawn. And it's not really hard to see why that would be. I mean, if you don't have any mating opportunities or any way to better yourself on a personally individual basis, what can you do? You can just give up because there's nothing to drive you. You've taken away the root evolutionary cause from many male characteristics and desires the opportunity to procreate. If you take away that key cause in, well, what our species and every species pretty much gets up to, what else do you have left? Your genes therefore have no purpose. They're destined to go into the void. Why compete at all? Well, we see in places like Japan, for instance, the rise of what is known as the hakimori. People who become totally withdrawn from society locking themselves in their homes and not engaging with wider society. There's over an estimated 1 million people currently living like this in Japan, and most of these people are men. One 2019 study found that men were significantly less likely to be a hikikomori when living in a location with services and work opportunities, which makes perfect sense. Yet, a flaw with this study is that all their subjects were drawn from urban locations. I have been able to find one study, which came out in 2020, and this study found that in their chosen rural location, a place called Hapo Cho in Akita, around 6% of their respondents were classified as Hikikomori. I'd be interested to see if this rate of being a Hikikomori is more likely in urban places than rural. 
Although this may not be the correct defining distinction, I would think that the defining distinction would be not only access to mating opportunities, but also access to facilities and ways to better yourself individually, alongside being a valued member of a community. It seems like these aspects to me would be what really drives male behaviour, the ability to better oneself, better the people around you, and father children. Because ultimately, as animals, that's what we're here to do. Now, let's take our gaze away from males and let's look at females. In Universe 25, the females became far more aggressive, taking over many of the roles of the male in things like territory defence and offspring defence yet at the detriment of providing for said offspring. In modern society, we also see women being encouraged to undertake traditionally male roles, be this roles that don't require physical strength or roles that do. But this is kind of strange, seeing that we know that on average, men have 48% more upper body strength and 34% more lower body strength than women, or at least according to a 1993 study. And we all know just from our regular lives that Men happen to be taller and they do happen to be stronger, so it's no wonder that men have slipped into certain roles more than their female counterparts. It's no wonder that men make up the majority of firefighters, will make up the majority of work which is physical, such as bricklayers or construction workers, or even roles that are entertainment valued, such as MMA fighting or boxing. Men not only are more physically built that way, for instance, they have significantly more muscle fibres than females as well as other physical advantages such as height, weight, muscle point insertion, smaller hips, stronger bones, bigger bones. They have all things like that. But men on average tend to have personality differences that lead them to be more aggressive in a manner, depending on the environment. For instance, men are far more on average disagreeable than women. And this is one reason why you get so many more men in prison than women being put in prison. It's an evolutionary aspect men have evolved to protect women, so it's no wonder that a lot of these traits have been passed down, because they have what made our ancestors successful within their prehistoric environment, and we're still currently struggling with how to adapt that to a modern environment today. But because the modern environment has changed, humans, both men and women, are having to change with it also. And this means that women are getting more opportunities to fulfil traditionally male roles, and that's great. If you're a female who's able to take on a firefighting role to the same extent as a man, then go for it, you know? Lift up those heavy fire hoses and climb those ladders. All good for you. Same as the thing if you're doing cognitive work, you should definitely be able to do that because all of society benefits by people like this who are able to do the work undertaking the work. But that doesn't mean that we won't see a gap in the amount of roles that men and women can take up based on their biology because we just will, no matter how hard you push. Men and women are built differently, both physically and mentally, due to our evolutionary history. So, what we found from Universe 25 is that not only once these females started taking on male roles did they conceive less, this then had the further impact of it reducing population growth. Well, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone. Most people who listen to this podcast should know. The West is seeing a massive decline in fertility rates. In 2019, the fertility rate was 1.53 births per woman. That's well under the 2.1 needed births for population replacement. Yet, if we compare this to the 1950s, Western women were having on average 4.7 children throughout their lifetime. That's a big difference. Actually, if we look into a projection in the future, by 2100, 23 nations are expected to have their populations halve. And this includes places like Spain and, drastically, Malta. So, can we compare this type of population decline in Western civilization to Universe 25? Well, Universe 25's population decline was thought to be brought about by the circumstances in which the mice found themselves. Are we seeing those same circumstances play out within Western civilization? Well, we're definitely seeing more people congregate in cities. We're definitely seeing greater access to mating opportunities for females and this having a drastic impact on an equal number of males having mating opportunities because females just, well, like they should. They pick the higher quality men. Unfortunately, my fellow men, you have to better yourself to become more desirable to women. This is just an evolutionary drive through sexual selection. But it is having massive ramifications on society. We are seeing a massive population decline. And we're going to have to deal with this somehow. 
simply because we have social services and we have things like pensions that we need to deal with. So, are we currently in a death spiral, just like the mice of Universe 25? Maybe, but maybe not. We're pretty smart as animals. We can probably figure things out, and I imagine that we can figure out a way to incentivize people having more children to stabilize our populations. Because why you're going to have things like immigration and emigration, because we're not a closed society, we're not like Universe 25, people can move in and move out. And that does account for a lot of increases in the population we've seen in the West. But in the future, we're obviously going to have to figure out a way of handling these issues. So. Is the West in a Universe 25 of our own making? I'd imagine probably not. Not overall, not to that simplistic of a scale. Things are far more nuanced. But I think it's important that we understand the environmental circumstances that resulted in the death of Universe 25. And if this could potentially happen to human societies if placed under the same circumstances. We are animals after all. Bloody marvellous, smart and extraordinary. But animals nonetheless.